Do we have a problem? Well, I don't know. We might have a problem with an angle of lull or an angle of list, but I don't really want to call the naval architect right away because they're expensive. And today I'm going to show you a few simple ways to test for angle of lull and for list. Testing for list. This is a do-it-yourself test, but before we get started, I need to just put out a general disclaimer. These tests do have the possibility of creating some danger to your vessel if you do them wrong. So if you have any questions or doubts about how to do these tests, please, please, please consult a naval architect. Do not try to sue me just because you saw it on the internet. So the trick when finding a vessel list is to look for a consistent vessel heel. Now that's not very easy because your ship is always rolling around. So what you need to do is log your vessel's heel over several different sh trips. Now what you're going to do is keep a log of this. You're going to be looking at your ship's heel angle. You want to measure if it was the port or the starboard side. Keep track of those separate. And with each heel angle, you want to also record the vessel draft and trim. That accounts for your loading condition. And also record which side your mooring lines were tied to. You're looking for a similar list angle at similar loading conditions. So it's okay if like your light loaded condition and your deep loaded condition are different heel angles. That's normal. But they should be similar across multiple voyages. So your loaded, heavy loaded condition should always have a similar list. And that will actually indicate if your heel is always showing at two and a half degrees to starboard, then you probably have a list. Now remember to take note of the side. If you keep flip-flopping between port and starboard, that's not a ship list. That's an angle of lull, actually. And it's very important when you measure these heel angles that you get an accurate angle measurement. So you want to use the fine gauge bubble level, and you want to measure out all the way to the first decimal point, as close as you can get. Right, you have logged your vessel heel over several trips, you have definitely noticed a pattern, and you suspect a vessel list. Excellent, very good. Now we're going to do the ultimate test, which is we're going to try and correct that vessel list by adding counter ballast. If this actually works correctly, then you know beyond a doubt that you have a vessel list. So the way we do this is we add ballast in a specific location to create a counteracting heel moment. I have to be very careful here and say this is a temporary fix. Do not add ballast and then forget about it. And the reason I say for that is because that is what many regulations consider to then be fixed ballast. And that's very different. That's typically something that needs to be recorded in your trim and stability booklet, and a naval architect needs to recertify your ship's stability at that point. So this is only a temporary fix to test for a ship list. Now, when you're looking for places to add some counter ballast, here are some general guidelines. Number one, you want to place the ballast as low as possible in your ship. And if you're using tanks to provide that counter ballast, avoid slack tanks whenever possible. If the tank is not completely full or empty, then you have a free surface moment and that can actually harm your vessel stability. And as I said before, beware of fixed ballast. Do not permanently install this stuff because that could trigger a stability test and an update to your trim and stability booklet. But if putting in temporary ballast actually brings your vessel back to level heel and nothing changes after that, congratulations, you have a, a vessel list. Testing for an angle of lull, the do-it-yourself test. So you suspect that you don't have a ship list, that you actually have an angle of lull. Warning, I have to warn everybody that there is a risk to this test. Now, you have the risk of healing the vessel too far. What you're going to do to test for an angle of lull is produce your own counteracting moment to treat it as if a list. And if it doesn't work out like that, then you know you have an angle of lull. If this is true, if you turn out to have an angle of lull, then you're actually going to be adding two angles together. You're going to be adding your angle of lull plus your list angle, it's going to turn out to be twice your initial heel angle. So be sure when you do this test that you can actually heal that far. So think about this danger, 
before you execute the test. Okay, so what will you need for an angle of lull? You are going to need water tanks that are positioned on deck and secured. Uh, you're using these as healing weights. You can use other weights as well if you have a crane handy with, say, some concrete blocks. You have to make sure that these are weights that you're putting on deck. So you can't use your own fixed ballast tanks inside the ship uh, because those will actually affect your center of gravity and can skew the results of the test. You're going to also need a pump and hose to fill those tanks. And then the most important thing you're going to need is some way to accurately measure your heel. So you're looking at a fine gauge clinometer or a, a pendulum instead, something like that that will give you a very accurate measurement of the heel. Finally, you're going to need a calm day in sheltered waters. Okay, here's the procedure for how to test for an angle of lull. Step one, you place your healing tanks on the main deck opposite the side of your starting list. So if I start out healing two and a half degrees to port, then you're going to put your tanks on the starboard side. Now you start filling the water tanks on your deck. You're going to continue filling those water tanks until your ship reaches exactly zero heel angle. Stop there, wait a second. Now here comes the critical point. Continue filling a little bit further and then you want to heal the sl ship slightly to the opposite side, half a degree or less. So if I started two and a half degrees on the port side, I'm going to first fill my tanks until I get all the way to exactly zero. And then I'm going to fill them a little bit more until I get to slightly past zero on the starboard side. Right, you have done that definitive movement. You are he healing at a little bit past dead even. So if our ship started two and a half degrees to port, we're now hovering at half a degree on the starboard side. And here is the critical test. If you just have a true list, then your ship is going to remain at that new heel angle. Okay, it's not going to shift any further. It's not going to change. But if you have an angle of lull, that ship will not hover there. Within five or 10 minutes, it will continue to heel further. It's going to keep going. So if you start at two and a half degrees port, you should finish somewhere around five degrees on starboard. And the catch is that that shift, that extra movement, required no further change in your tanks. And if that happened on its own, you know you have an angle of lull. Okay, it is time to call in the pros. You have confusing results and you're not really sure whether you have a problem or not. Call in the pros. This is now when you need to call your consulting naval architect and let them come in and give you some more advanced options for testing. What are those more advanced options? First option is going to be the dead weight survey. This is a great test for ship list. It's going to provide you the following information. It'll tell you the total weight of your ship, the center, of, the longitudinal center of gravity, the transverse center of gravity. Now this is good for detecting ship list. It's going to find the total change in ship weight. So you figure out, you know, I've brought weight on board somewhere and how much weight, and it's going to give you a general center of gravity to find out where on board that weight is. But it does not tell you the vertical center of gravity. So it just tells you where to look on the ship and about how much you're looking for. The other more advanced test that a naval architect can do is a full stability test. Now that is ideal for detecting an angle of lull. This is going to provide you with several more details of information. It's going to give you the total weight. It's going to give you the exact center of gravity in longitudinal, transverse, and vertical directions. And the most important thing is it's going to detect if you have a free surface moment. If there's some tank or cross connect open that you don't know about, uh, that will show up in the stability test as a free surface moment. And they'll be able to tell you right there on the day of whether or not you have some unknown free surface moment, which is one of the light leading causes for an angle of lull. Yes, we have reached the part of the show where I ask for tips. So please hand me your tips. In this case, I just need you to click that little subscribe button. Subscribe.